Hi, my name is Pandurang Nayak. I work as a technology specialist in Microsoft and I work with a lot of customers advising them on how to move their applications to the cloud. In today's session, we are going to look at how IT professionals or network administrators or system administrators, whichever role you might call them, work on Windows Azure and what tasks they might have to do in the cloud scenario. The Windows Azure platform basically consists of three different services. Windows Azure, which provides you a scalable storage and compute service, and management APIs that let you move the scalable storage and compute as per your scripts or as per your requirements. SQL Azure, which is a fully functional relational database, and Azure App Fabric, which allows you to connect your on-premise applications to your cloud applications. As IT professionals, just like you manage your organization's systems, you also require to manage your organization's cloud environment. Managing your cloud environment could mean multiple things. We are going to look at three important tasks that you might want to do as an IT professional. The first task is to create a secure deployment environment. By this, you allow authorized systems and developers in your organization to deploy their applications to the cloud. The second task is to manage your cloud instances using PowerShell scripts. Making this work will actually allow you to write any sort of scripts to automate your management of the cloud environment. The third task is to use System Center Operations Manager and monitor the health and performance of your cloud systems. This is just like using System Center Operations Manager for your on-premise servers and for all your on-premise infrastructure just by adding an additional add-on, you can just extend this to monitoring your cloud systems as well. We'll now take a look at doing these three tasks as an IT pro for your cloud environment. Let's take a look at the demo. In this demo, we will see some of the common IT pro tasks that are done by IT pros to configure and manage their Windows Azure instances. We're going to look at three of the common tasks. The first task being securing your Windows Azure portal from any developers deploying applications into that particular environment. This is the Windows Azure management portal. And uh, as you can see here, we're running a staging and a production environment, staging running a couple of instances of an application, and production running a slightly different web application with four instances running in production. Now, we require to upgrade these to newer versions as development progresses, but we do not require every single developer in the organization to have the Azure portal usernames and passwords. We require to ensure that only those developers that are authorized to do upgrades to this application are able to do those upgrades. This is achieved by doing something we call certificates. We upload a certificate into the Azure application, into the Azure management portal. This becomes the management certificate for Azure. And this Azure management certificate is then also installed on the local machine. So this local machine installation will ensure that this machine is allowed to upload these applications into this. So we start by clicking on Add Certificate, browse to the certificate, upload the certificate and the password that this certificate was protected with, and then say Create. Azure validates the certificate, and once the certificate has been validated, it takes the certificate and uploads it into Azure. Now this certificate is what would be required to be installed on every single machine that requires to upload to this particular hosted service. We now use Visual Studio and configure it assuming that this is one of the machines that's authorized. When you right click and say publish on the cloud project, you can actually choose to add or manage and then choose a certificate that's installed on this system. So in this case, this particular certificate is already installed on the system. 
and then we provide the subscription ID from the Azure portal. The subscription ID is found when you click a particular deployment. And by providing these two, we can save these settings and then allow any developer to use these settings to publish to the cloud. This is a simple way to protect and ensure that not all the developers in your organization have the Windows as your management portal, usernames and passwords with them, but only those that are authorized have this certificate installed on those machines. The second task that we'll look at is using PowerShell. PowerShell is a very popular scripting language for IT administrators. PowerShell scripts let you easily create simple utility scripts and work with uh, stuff. So we're going to start with the add ps snap-in command and add Azure Management Tools snap-in. I've already installed the Azure Management commandlets and that lets me uh, get the Azure Management Tools snap-in. After that, I can use the command from PowerShell, which is get command, to see all the commands available to me in this snap-in. So I'm going to refer this snap-in, and I can look at the entire list of commands available to me. You can see that the PowerShell commandlets provide you with all the required tasks, adding certificates, getting certificates, getting deployments, getting hosted services, getting storage keys, operation status, moving deployments, setting a new deployment to a particular hosted service, even collecting logs. All of these are available to you as part of the standard commandlets. Now these commandlets can easily be used to perform all these tasks. We're going to try one or two simple tasks with these commandlets. To, to start off with that, the Azure commandlets would require to actually refer to the same certificate that we provided. So we're going to look into the local certificate store and use a get item from the local certificate store to get the certificate that we've uploaded in the previous step. The certificate requires a thumbprint. We can go into Azure, look at our deployment, copy the thumbprint, thumbprint from there, and provide that thumbprint over here. This should get us the certificate. We can even just type the variable to ensure that we've got the certificate. We now need to have another variable holding the subscription ID uh, the subscription ID again can be found for the particular deployment. So we're going to look at the production deployment and try and increase the instances over here. So for the production deployment, we go and collect the subscription ID and paste it into our command. And then we provide the uh, service name. So we're going to look at uh, uh, the service name. In our case, the service name is going to be the name of the hosted service. The name of the hosted service for us is simple demo application. So we're going to provide that as the service name. So now that we have these three, we can utilize these. Most of the Azure commandlets take these three as parameters. Now we can use these three variables as parameters and start working on a various bunch of commands. We're going to start by looking at this command, which uh, lets us get the hosted service's name by providing the service name, the certificate, and the uh, deployment ID. We're then going to pipe that to the get deployment command and get the deployment slot for production. 
and finally we are going to pipe this to the set deployment configuration and for the Zoller web instance increase the number by one. When we fire this command, the commandlets are connecting in the background to the cloud service via the management API provided by Azure and then trying to increase the instance count by one. In a few seconds, you will see that reflecting in the Azure management portal and then the steps required to provision a new instance would be undertaken automatically. So you can imagine that you can actually write health monitoring scripts with these commandlets and then automatically scale out your application as your application re reaches its capacity. The third task is to look at how we can use System Center Operations Manager, a very familiar tool for IT pros to manage your on-premise systems, to manage also your cloud systems. By installing the Windows Azure Management Pack, you can see that in the same monitoring environment that you are familiar with for your local monitoring systems, you can also get the Windows Azure Monitoring as part of that. When you click onto the Windows Azure Monitoring part, you can look at various active alerts. You can also look at the deployment states for your cloud deployments. You can look at the hosted service states for your cloud deployments. Uh, the hosted service states also shows uh, the health explorer, which shows us the various summary of your particular hosted service. You can also look at the various state change events of when this particular service was down, when this particular service was restarted. Any of these could have been done by your developers or by anybody else in your organization or by an application failure. All of those are recorded over here for you to monitor. And you could even go into monitoring individual role instances and looking at role states or at different performance monitors that you're collecting for your application. This is very easily configurable into the Azure application and then very easily monitored from the familiar interface of System Center Operations Manager. What you saw were some very simple steps that an IT professional could do for their organization's cloud environment. Windows Azure has a great roadmap ahead. There are some additional features that are coming up that have been announced very recently and will make IT pros do more challenging tasks on the cloud. One of them is a new instance called VM Role, which lets you take virtual machines and put them into the cloud. It, think of it like an Hyper-V in the cloud running all your virtual machines, both on-premise and in the cloud. We also are going to provide you with full IIS support in the cloud, which will let you configure your websites with far more functionality and far more control. We are also looking at greater connectivity options between your on-premise software and your cloud software. All the connectivity will be secure and all the connectivity will be seamless when you're working between these two environments. Moreover, we have improved developer as well as IT Pro functionality and productivity tools that will come your way that will make it more and more easier to perform these kind of tasks on your cloud environment. You can keep a track of all of these and get started with some of these at windowsazure.com today. There's a new kind of power that can make your business capable of more than ever before with less. Cloud power. The most comprehensive solutions for the cloud on earth. From Microsoft.